This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and you're listening to Python's Paradise. This is your host, DJ Python Hyena, and I am joined by... Shiloh Six, one of your biggest fans, B.A. Yes, and um, <laughs> Shiloh Six has got all kinds of questions for you, so uh, I'm going to let him uh, dictate uh, a variety of uh, this interview well first thing to start things off ba i've met you before man i met you at the esquire in moncton a couple of years ago you took over the woman's washroom yeah i've done that many times <laughs> and then it was awesome you know some of my friends down in moncton i've grown up with uh gabriel leblanc yep yeah i've known him for oh close to 22 years now in uh dan dan uh well dan leblanc as well all oh, right on i've known them for oh, ever since we were kids we went to the same school together 20 25 years ago until you escape from Moncton? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I miss them terribly. You know, I don't see them as much, but I'm hoping to send the adhesives on a on a big tour sometime in 2016. I'm working that out with uh, Gabriel there. But it's a pleasure to have you tonight, B.A. Sweet. So my first question for you is, what got you into music? It's kind of like jealousy of all my friends being in bands, and then they got, like, free beer and tens of dollars so I kind of wanted the same thing so I just decided that I I should go to music to get into music to get the, the free stuff you know you didn't want the chicks I mean I did I you get all kinds really of chicks BA come on that way um, not the way the show evolved probably didn't help that situation um, but yeah I wanted it all and uh, I did I didn't get all of it but I got the tens of dollars, I guess. CBC Music should have put you on the radio. I don't know what the hell's wrong with them. I don't know, man. I don't know. They should have put you on the radio. Man. Nah, their loss. Yeah, I guess, I guess all my loss too. I think. Uh, well, you know, you yeah, you you know, you're more of an underground kind of kind of artist, you know, and you know, you've said you before. You, you think uh, or people know whatever you're critically hated. Well, you know who your fans are. That's to I me. Mean, yeah, no, I mean. I think, well, when you do anything, there's going to be people that like it and people that dislike it, I guess. It's kind of inevitable. Oh, of course, you know. Critics can hate you all they want. You know exactly who your fans are, and we'll always come back for more. I still listen to Truffle Shuffle almost every day, even though <laughs> it's been years. And uh, uh, it's funny, I was in St. John earlier today, and I played, I was with my mom, and I played uh, The Best Fucking Day Ever. Yeah. And she just goes, what is that? <laughs> And I'm oh, like, exactly what my mom would say. Yeah, and then I'm like, that's B.A. Johnson. She goes, is he wearing a hat? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do often wear a hat. Yeah, <laughs> with the crack missing out of your pants. <laughs> How was uh, recording your first album, B.A.? My first album? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, it was a long time ago. It was pretty fun. I recorded it in Hubbard, Nova Scotia. Uh, my friend was renting a house on the ocean, and uh, he was kind of nice, except they didn't have... They didn't have plumbing, so we had to use an outhouse. <laughs> nice. But beyond that, it was a uh, it was a good time. That's how long ago that record. Was made. Yeah. Well, you've been you've been making music since what the seventies or late 70s. Or, since 30s. the seventies. For a long time. Yeah, you've been making it music was like decades. Yeah, you you know, and you know what? You still come to Fredericton here. You were here at the Capitol, I believe, on July 9th. I didn't even know you were here, man. I'd have been front and center. No, nobody did. It was pretty pretty ill attended. Really. Ah, uh, it's a Thursday, capital, you know, summertime. I suppose so. Festivals in New Brunswick too, so it's kind of hard, I think, to get people out. Well, some friends of mine, some friends of mine, came up to me and said, "Did you know that he was at the Capitol on July 9th? No. What are you talking about? And they're like, "Yeah, he was there." Anybody. It's like a secret there, you know. Yeah. Well, Freder- Fredericton um, is a is a is a good place for music and stuff like that. You know, if lots of people know about it, then they attempt to come out to it. You know. Yeah, Fredericton has been good to me. That's for sure. So tell us about yourself. You know, uh, the uh, the music is obviously one thing. You know, you've been doing it for a long time. You know, you got into music because you wanted free free stuff. You know, chicks, which you probably get more than Elvis Presley did. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know, but that's not been my most successful thing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when you're like young and you want to start out playing music, I mean. You kind of yeah, you, you you buy into the the dream, you know. Well, yeah, that's like the like same thing with me. I, I've been a exactly. bassist for nineteen years. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, with Gab and with Dan and uh, with all of them there, you know, I I've played music with them many times. You know, exactly, you buy into that dream, and then 
you get the you get the aftermath of it all too, especially in the clubs aftermath. and bars. You get the aftermath. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, exactly. Clubs and bars, you know, and that that's all. That's where it all comes. Um, so tell us about the new album. Shit sucks. I I recorded it in Halifax with a guy named Mike O'Neill. He used to play in a band called the Inbreds. Um, I'm, it felt like a pretty good record. It was the first one in a while that was recorded in a studio. It's the first one I ever did. Uh, where I hired musicians to actually, kind of like I hired a band to kind of back me up on some of it, which I've never done before, and uh, that was kind of interesting. I don't know, it just felt kind of a bit, I put a, probably a bit more work into this one than I have into some of the other ones. You know, uh, Not that it was that much work, but I mean more work <laughs> than normal for me. This record here is the record where you've been quoted as stop caring, you know, about, about trying to get on C- CBC and all. You just kind of went back to your roots and went for it. Yeah, I mean, I just, I felt like I'd been kind of deliberately maybe not swearing as much or kind of writing in a certain, I don't know. Yeah, this is the record where I kind of stopped caring. I kind of know, like, all my records sell exactly the same number of records. Um, It seems like the same people just buy buy my records. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I I really didn't have to kind of try and pander anymore or try and make it. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to get played on, on Radio 3. I knew it. It would probably do fun on college radio, which it always seems to do. Um, so I kind of just figured, just just kind of do what I want for a change. Well, you know, there's one of my one of my idols is Howard Stern. He's the Python's idol as well, and you know, he he's kind of like you. He does what he wants, how he wants, you know, and he doesn't give in to any of that. Uh, well, he's how, how, Howard Stern, I think, probably can do that. Oh he yeah, than I can, sadly, but. I don't know. I think you have. I think you have that edge. You know, people know you're wild, and people know you're fun, and you have all this energy on stage, and you can leap right off a chair. I can do that. Yeah, you can. That's awesome. So talk to it. Tell us about. You know, like I was reading an article about you. Um, you were you, you were obviously there in the '80s. You know, so uh, you, you the article explained how you know um, people kind of take for granted now the 80s they kind of take for granted what we had then i mean i think the 80s have been really glorified i mean especially now it kind of seems like uh the 80s nostalgia is really huge and it's kind of been big for for a while and i found the and i found the the 90s like it hasn't aged as well as a decade for some reason where it seems like we kind of taken the best things from the 80s and it's almost like they kind of continue like there's like a new life for all of it which is i find kind of Odd because when I was around in the '80s, I kind of didn't care as much about it. Like I liked things that were going on, but I also was getting beat up by like dudes that really liked Van Halen. <laughs> yeah. On the school bus, you know. So it was like a little different. Um, the reality of the '80s and the '80s we remember might be two different things, I guess. I suppose so. You know, I have an '80s glam haircut. I'll always have it. You know, so I, I'm an '80s boy myself, and you know, the '80s yeah, I mean, nostalgia yeah. just. Rides with me every day. A lot of kids that were born in like 1990 that their fashion is kind of like influenced by the 80s, or like musically, a lot of stuff seems kind of like. I thought the 80s kind of influence would have waned by now, but it seems like it it just keeps going, and you keep thinking like, when is the 90s stuff going to show up? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if it really has yet. I wouldn't say so myself. You know, I was there in the 90s as well, and you know, I kind of I agree with you on that. I. I like I, I've been wearing a, a bandana f- uh, with my long hair for oh, 20 years now, you know, and I I don't see that anymore on other people, and you know I don't see the neon pants, I don't see the acid wash pants, I don't I don't see any of that, and you know it's almost like uh, from the 90s grunge music has kind of disappeared as well, you know, it's kind of like it just came yeah. and went. I mean, it, for a while there was a couple of bands I think in Truro that were kind of like grunge ish. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think whenever baggy pants come back, we know the '90s have returned. I think that's that's what I'm waiting for. You know? Oh man, I remember those pants too. Guys wearing them hanging halfway past their arse. I remember oh, yeah, that. No, it was those big pants, you know. They were they huge. Were thing, nice and comfortable. Oh yeah, I remember uh, oh, an old friend of mine. This goes back twenty some years, and he had those pants, and they were huge. Like you, you could like put four le- four legs in one hole, oh, yeah. you know. No, you. I, I. I remember a photo. I remember I. I didn't know how to sew, so a friend of mine uh, sewed some pants for me, and there was, she took a picture of her and her friend standing both in one pant leg. That's how baggy my pants were back then. That is awesome. 
You were a uh, part of a band called, uh, of course, B.A. and the Chuds. You guys influenced uh, Doug and the Slugs, another uh, Canadian band. I had the pleasure of seeing Doug Slug quite a few years ago. But you guys influenced this band. What was your time like with B.A. and the Chuds? Like, do you remember that? It was a long time ago. I mean, I kind of, I kind of remember. It was kind of a different time for music because you play more shows than you kind of do now. Like you would mostly just show up in like North Bay and you'd play like five nights in the same bar and then you'd go play like Timmins and do like five nights. Whereas opposed to now where it's like a lot more one-offs. Yeah, you know, like... Not I... only people drink as much. They don't drink like they did back then. No, that's definitely for sure. You know, know booze is more expensive or drinking and driving or what, but people, yeah, people aren't drinking like I'd that. say booze is more expensive. You know, like back then a, a case of beer was like uh, eight bucks, you know, now it's almost 24. I don't know, but... It, I, prices continue to rise. Yeah, I know. And, you know, like I look at the the world as it is now and I wonder to myself, you know, I remember a time when things were uh, a lot more fun. Things were better. You know, it was it didn't drain your bank account just to go get a beer from the store, you know, and I look at now yeah. and wonder what the hell happened with the world. And I find a lot of people now, too, aren't going to shows as much because house shows are really popular now or um, there's not as much all ages shows. So, so kids don't really. Um, it almost seems like the all ages seem kind of trade train people to come to shows, and it seems like that doesn't exist as much. Yeah, you know, I was one more for the nineteen plus shows because then I could actually go wild, and I wouldn't have to worry about some stupid kid there and stomping on him. Well, yeah, true enough. I remember, I, I was very happy when I turned nineteen, but I just remember when I was like really young, we would go to see shows all the time, like. And I think when when we turned nineteen, it kind of trained us to go to bars, you know. Yeah, I kind of get that we same were just thing. Going to a bar without drinking, so the second we could drink. We were pretty excited about it, but yeah, you know, it I, just kept us going to shows, right? Marilyn Manson came to Moncton in 2009, and me and Gab were, were 19 at the time. You know, before that, we used to go to shows, and then, you know, we we picked up instruments, you know, we'd been doing it for a long time. And you're absolutely right. We ended up ended up in the bars years for years and years and years instead of going to shows. Yeah, it happened. You were nominated for a Hard Rock album back in 1985, and this is the funniest thing ever. You turned around and gave the uh, the award back when you found out you'd have to pay for it. Do you remember that? Well, yeah, they they don't tell you this, but they charge you for for the award, like the actual award. Like they charge you a couple hundred bucks. Do they really? I didn't know that. Yeah, for like Junos. Yeah, they do. You know, I heard you that your label would pay for it. Yeah. Uh, but mine did not want to, so, and it was up to me, and I just was like, I don't really. <laughs> I, I heard that on the the Walk of Fame, the Hall of Fame in Hollywood, uh, the Walk of Fame, that they have to pay to maintain their star and stuff like really? that. I yeah. I know that. You think they would, you think someone would sweep it for you? you yeah, know, really, you, you know. You... Something and you get a star on there, you think someone's going to take care of it. Work hard, make millions, you think someone would take care of that for you, but apparently. Maybe people are going there to see the stars. Yeah. You know, clean it up. That's yeah, that's you you think they would? You make all that money, and you you think the record label will turn around and maintain that? I didn't even know that Python. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's true. I heard that on Howard. Howard, man, Howard. Yeah, if you were ever asked to go on Howard Stern, how would you feel about that? Probably pretty scared. I'd agree with that. No, maybe probably just because be a lot of people listen. Well, the Python here absolutely loves Howard. He he's loved him for oh, many, many, many years, and he, he, one of his big dreams is to is to meet Howard. Yeah, I can see that for sure. I've never been on a radio show that a lot of people have listened to, except probably your. I'm sure your program has a lot of. Listeners. Oh, there's lots of people that are waiting for this interview tonight. Uh, actually, <laughs> actually, Shiloh, my big dream is to have a threesome with Emma Stone and Nana Kendrick. <laughs> oh, there you go. But you got a lot. You got a lot of dreams. Yeah, well, you know, helps me get to sleep at night. Yeah, no doubt. Listen, I was wondering, who are your musical influences? Um, I kind of I really like Daniel Johnson, who was kind of like a. I didn't realize how crazy he was. He writes kind of strange, kind of love songs. He was kind of semi popular in the '90s, um, but then there was a documentary released about him where I actually saw that he actually was quite. He had a severe mental problems, so I didn't know. But I really like Fats Waller a lot. And uh, Jimmy Rogers, the yodeling brakeman. I know that guy. Yeah, I, I, I don't listen to any good 
like popular music. I, I listen to like a lot of old records. Yeah, you could ask me, BA, what's on the radio now, and I don't have a damn clue. Uh, I, I saw Weird Al the other day, and I didn't even know who he was parodying at this point. I, oh, wow, really uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't even know myself. How was seeing Weird Al? Amazing. That, that must have been a treat and a half. It was. He's, he's very good. Where, he, where, every time. It's kind of phenomenal how good his band is. Where did you see him? He played a casino an hour north of Toronto uh, called Casino Rama in Barrie. I went, I went there. Oh, I've been to Barrie many times. I've got every album he's done, and I think one of the worst um, um, things that happened to me was back, I think it was 1994 or 95. I think, no, it was 1995. Mm. I have front row center seats for the Aiken Center to see Weird Al Yankovic live, and he ended up canceling because the people of Fredericton just couldn't support the ca- the concert. Really? Yeah, and I was I front bet row. If he played there now, it'd be packed. Oh, he's playing at uh, he played at um, Casino New Brunswick. Both yeah. shows sold out within I think it was the hour way back in April or something like that. Both yeah, shows I know sold the out. Show here was sold out. It seems like Weird Al's more popular now than he. And he's ever been. Well, I think with, with time, you know, if a band, especially back from the 80s, you know, goes away for a while and then there's that demand for them to come back or, you know, they end up back in the spotlight for whatever reason, you know, I, I think, and that new generation, ugh, they kind of see and they, they respond to it that way. Yeah, I think also, this just seems like with all the video stuff and YouTube, it kind of seems like it's Weird Al's. It's very perfect for him right now, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You know, he came back uh, a couple years, quite a few years ago, with that white nerdy song, put him back in the yeah, spotlight. I now, think it's more more views than the the original riding dirty song. Yeah, exactly. So you know, Weird Al is one of those guys that you know people grew up with him, and then those people that grew up with him tell uh, the next generation here, here's where. And he's one of those musicians that just kind of sailed along with the times, you know, and everybody's loved him yeah. ever since. Pretty what, much, right, for sure. What about Ray Stevens? Are you as uh, familiar with him? I am. I don't think his his career arc is not. I don't. I think I saw he's playing somewhere around here. Oh, I'd love to see the streak, man. So I guess he's still doing it. Would you actually sing that song? Like, you know, for if if someone asked you, because he'd be the perfect song for your type of energy. Would you actually do the streak? I don't think I'm, I'm familiar with that one. But I, I've, I could listen to I don't know if people are still streaking as much. Oh, I guarantee you, if you get up on that stage and... start the fat again. Will Ferrell is. Well, yeah, he did have that one scene. That's it. <laughs> B.A. Johnston is bringing back streaking. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I would personally want to streak <laughs> like in the streets of Fredericton. It's right down Queen there or something. You know how many people would just rally and throw their hands up and go, B.A., B.A.? It depends on how many hot chicks I can run into. Yeah. Well, there you go. You turn around and streak down Fredericton, B.A., I guarantee all those hot chicks are going to be right there with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how accurate of, uh, yeah, I don't know if I, that's a really good guarantee of what would happen. I probably would just get really winded quickly and then just curl into a fetal position or something. <laughs> you have all kinds of wicked songs about pirates, Putins, deep fryers. You know, deep fryer in my bedroom, great song. Uh, what's uh, what's your kind of favorite song you that you've done? You know, um, there you know truffle shuffle. I think the uh, like song Deep Gutenberg is great. Song that I had is 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 the my heart is a blinking Nintendo. Yeah, seems that's uh, probably my 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 hit. I guess anyone who loves Nintendo is loves anything to do with Nintendo, whether it's music, you know Mario. Um, do you still get a lot of requests for like you know Steve Gutenberg? You made a song about I Steve Gutenberg for that the other day, actually, which is I don't get that that one requested very often. Really? I mostly get this horrible song I wrote called Geezer Pleaser. Request. I don't I don't think Steve Gutenberg gets requested anymore. No, I think I think it's, he's really. I haven't. Really I, strange. He was so good in his movies. I liked him in Police Academy. Yeah, he was very likable. Yeah, and then you know Police Academy two just kind of kind of sunk a little bit. Oh, they all sunk a little bit. Each well, each progressive police academy was a little bit yeah, more I think, depressing than the one that. Well, let's it. not forget he did, it was in "Can't Stop the Music," and that's when you wanted the music to stop. You, I think he, I think he was also in Zeus and Roxanne with Kathleen Quayle back in 1998. I don't think I've seen him since. He did a cameo as himself in a TV show called Party Down, 
where he hires like caterers to to cater his birthday party, and he was actually really funny in it. Oh, uh, the song Steve Gutenberg is definitely one I'd I, I'd ask you to play. Did, did did you actually have to get permission to use his name and all that, or I don't. I did not oh. actually get his, any permission for that one, or oh. for really anything I've ever done. Wow. So I'm allowed to do a song about having sex with Avril Lavigne, and I won't get in trouble. You might get in some trouble, <laughs> but not necessarily from Avril Lavigne. It could just be from people in general. Might be. Yeah. I mean, maybe you could. I, 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 I'm not the one to ask for songwriting advice. Probably. What about? Oh, you kidding me? You wrote some wicked songs. What about Lindsay Lohan? I mean, she's not sober enough to know I did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, you could pick your celebrity crush, I guess. And you've uh, you've written song. some wicked songs there, B.A. you got to give yourself the credit for that. Like I said, you made a song of one of my all-time favorite movies, The Goonies. Yeah, that's a, a great movie for sure. Oh, a great movie. And you made a song called Truffle Shuffle, and it's one of the best songs I've ever heard. It's all about chunk. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, that's my, my chunk and sloth song there. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, it's so realistic because it actually makes you wonder, where the, where did they go? Chunk is a lawyer. Oh, wow, really? Real life, yeah. He's an entertainment lawyer, yeah. I know sloth's actor, John. I, I don't know uh, what sloth is doing. Oh, I, know, I, I nearly blew chunks the other night when I saw The Gallows. <laughs> oh, it was a terrible movie. Not very good? No, it was a terrible movie, B.A., so I shouldn't. I shouldn't bother. No, we're actually film critics by trade. We okay. do. Uh, we do a film and music show. You know, what we've been film critics for eh, me eighteen years. Oh wow! Uh, this is my show here, but he, uh, Shiloh knows you better than I do, so that's why I'm kind of letting him take over. I, rem- no I remember that in the bathroom, man. Yet? Is that out yet? The what now? Pixels. The new Adam comes out. Uh, comes movie. out tonight. I got some scathingly bad reviews. Yeah, it looks really bad. I mean, you it really know, it looks terrible. Yeah, it really does. Because I like Donkey Kong, but I don't know if I like Donkey Kong enough. That's the only reason why I would consider seeing it is because of Donkey Kong. They should have put him on the poster, you know. Yeah, or maybe if he kills Adam Sandler, I would be more apt to go see it. Oh yeah, definitely. Right, right now, we want we want him to we want uh, Batman to take out Jennifer Lopez. She's the one I can't stand right now. Yeah, <laughs> she's not a big not a Jennifer Lopez. Oh no, it's, it's just the fact that you know the movies for us as film critics. You know, some of the movies that she's done are just repulsive. Not, not so great, eh? No, I haven't seen a Jennifer Lopez uh, film in a while. You're not yeah. missing anything. No, you're really not, BA. <laughs> I'll continue my streak. Of there you go. Her films. So, the what's the number one song you know you get requested the most? Because I remember when I saw you, the song was "Everyone You Date After Me Is a Sack of Shit." Yeah, requested the most. I guess Dirt Mall. I get requested a lot, which is a song about like crummy malls. Dirtbag Beach was awesome. I get that sometimes requested. I mean, I don't get anything requested too much, and usually it kind of changes. I get a lot of, like, there'll be, like, one guy who really wants to hear one thing, and he'll, like, scream it at me for, like, 40 minutes. Nice. Yeah, I watched the uh, video on YouTube where you were uh, paid $80 in a grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. Did you actually get your grilled cheese? I don't think I ever did. Oh, what the hell? They didn't give you a grilled cheese? I mean, it's, like, hard to eat before the show because I run around a lot, and then after I want to eat, but then the grilled cheese is cold sometimes. Oh, wow. I, I live with my friend Christina. I showed her the video of you on Facebook where you're in the back alley in the street or whatever, and you're singing the best day ever, and you're just going absolutely wild up and down the stairs, and then you throw your foot in the air and you land on your ass. Oh, that's, a, that's my favorite YouTube video. Yeah, that video was awesome. Yeah, Christina punched him in the face for <laughs> showing him that video. <laughs> she, wasn't, she, wasn't she looked and she says, more cat, more cat videos. Well, she looked and she said, what is that? And I said, that's B.A. Johnson. She goes, what the hell is a B.A. Johnson? I said, he's a legend in Canada. And she goes, only for you. And I'm like, oh, come on. And I played Truffle Shuffle. And she goes, yeah, and then I played Truffle Shuffle. She's like, at least he's got a good voice. I was in some choirs as a a young man, so. Did you go to church as a young man? I was. My mother was very, uh, very into me going to church. She's still hooked on filet fish She has the occasional one. Nice. Well, I grew up in a, a Christian home, you know, but uh, as a film critic, I get tired of these people that go to the movies and count swear words. Like, I can't yeah, stand Kirk cool. Cameron at all. Oh, yeah, that's right. You hate Kirk Cameron. I'd like to see one of his, his religious films. Are they oh, pretty terrible? Oh, they're terrible, B.A. Fireproof, Fireproof Saving junk. Christmas. 
It's what, which what? Fireproof and Saving Christmas are junk. Are they like at least funny? Oh no, they're yeah. so bad no. you can't even laugh at them. They put it this way: <laughs> Saving Christmas got Christmas, like Jesus. Yeah, something. Well, something like that. His brother or something or his nephew, whatever it is, says, "Oh, you know, we're giving Christmas back to the heathens." And Kirk Cameron says, "No, let's go and save Christmas from all the heathens." Oh, it was so bad. I want you to look at it this way, BA. He uh, got so mad about the terrible reviews Saving Christmas got last year that he demanded that his fans storm the gates of Rotten Tomatoes so he could <laughs> shift it from a zero percent that it got. And then uh, even Christians hated the film. <laughs> it backfired on him. Okay, because that kind of—I think it's his target market. Well, I think so. I think he's just got a big target on his back, too, because he's kind of a pompous ass that way. Yeah, I only really remember him from Growing Pains. I don't oh, think he's I a ever... Growing Pain, all right. Yeah, like... Growing Pain yeah, in the ass. Exactly. Like, that's the thing. He, he, he's such a pompous ass. You know, he thinks he made this masterpiece of a film, and then it's so bad you can't even watch it. And then, you know, to accuse us and critics and everything of being rotten, it's like, no, you made a bad movie, dude. And Yeah, I mean, I guess you just got to... If I was Kirk Cameron, I just wouldn't read the reviews, probably. Yeah. I they would be terrible. Yeah, because I, I remember listening to... it's I went, On one of your live albums there, and then you said, Kirk Cameron, he's a born-again Christian. He's not going to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that made me laugh, because both of us can't stand the guy, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, he hasn't aged well, I don't think. No, he really hasn't. So do you plan on making another record after after Shit Sucks and touring again? Yeah, Are you going to come back through Frederick? The Shit Sucks record tour is kind of winded down. Like with the last Maritime run, I've kind of toured it um, everywhere. So that's, okay. Gen- that's Jennifer Lopez's career. Shit Sucks. <laughs> well, she was on the In Living Color. That was really good. I think she just danced, though. Oh well. Oh, she, just just watch Geely enough and the boy next door, and you'll you'll agree that repulsive. shit sucks. The boy next door looked pretty terrible. Oh, it was even longer. worse than terrible. Put it this way, B.A. You know, you go there to see Jennifer Lopez laying on the on the bed there, whatever some dude. His hands cover her up. How much of a rip off and cheap is that? Isn't yeah, also like twelve or something in that movie. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I, something like that. Yeah. And, and why not get somebody like Heather Graham, who's willing to do nudity? What's with getting these actresses that won't I take their know. clothes off? Hollywood, man. Like Cameron Hollywood's Diaz right. wouldn't take it off in sex tape. Hollywood, man. Called sex tape. You'd assume somebody's. Doing like get Heather stuff. Graham. She'll do anything. Now, VA. Yeah, what if you were in that movie? Now, I'm sure that would have skyrocketed, man. Yeah, my career would have really taken off. Yeah, and then you got Jack... Right next door would be pretty good. You got Jack Black yeah, in then, there, too. Then uh, Cameron Diaz could have another film where she pulls jizz out of her hair. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of the wild the wild ones, you know. We we kind of say what's on our mind. You know, we have yeah. a lot of fun with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you could have another movie with that. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> So uh, the Maritime Tour is pretty much winding down. You know, I missed you here in, in Fredericton. That's a kick in the ass. But do you plan on coming near Fredericton anytime soon? Because you know what would be awesome? We could do a, a live back, in studio yeah. interview with you. And if you brought your guitar, I'll bring my bass and we'll hook it up. And I'll actually, I, I can play yeah. Truffle Shuffle. Oh, sweet. You know oh, the chords? Oh, I know everything to it, man. I know Truffle Shuffle. I know the best day ever. And uh, Steve Gutenberg, I've been a bassist for 19 years. I play by ear. Sweet. So yeah, I would love to do an in studio session with you, man, and bang out truffle shuffle. There's so many people that are just waiting for this interview tonight, and would absolutely love to hear that, man. Well, you, good. We'll have to hook that up. Oh, well, you well, bet. Why don't you bring Steve Guttenberg with you? He's not doing I'll anything. Call, I'll call him up at home and see if he's available. Yeah, oh, he's available. Trust me. <laughs> you look at his internet movie database. I don't think he's done a movie since 1990. There's so a gap. The last question I have for you, BA. Before we sadly wind this night up, what, uh, what's the next plans for uh, B.A. Johnston, you know? My next plan, I'm playing a beer festival in Hamilton where I'm opening for Ill Scarlet on top of a mall. <laughs> that is awesome, like on top of the mall? Yep. Dude, how many people could say they got into a microphone and sang on top of a mall here in Hamilton, yeah, in not, Brunswick, not Quebec? Many. Not, not many, I don't That's why you are yeah, the I Canadian legend. The plum gigs, you know? There you go, and you know that's why you're the Canadian legend. You know there was a movie uh, about you. I think I saw something like that on YouTube called um, Something Stinks or something like that. Oh, this is what 110 percent smells. That's like. it. Yep. Uh, was that actually about you, or I never got a chance yeah, to see? It was it. a concert film that came out in 2006. Got is it sold maybe close to a thousand of those before people stopped buying DVDs, and then I stopped making them. Is uh, there still a copy available? Because I'd love to buy it off you, man. There's I'd love to. Sp- in my, in, in, yeah, I got a couple in a drawer somewhere. I could 
scrounge them up? Yeah, just uh, you've got my email there. So, yeah, you know, I'd love to buy one off you. I'd love to see the movie, man, and I'd love to review it too. You know, that would be fantastic. Right, I'll, I'll have to cut the Jennifer Lopez cameo out of it, I guess. Yeah. You know what? If you know, Since you're in it, B.A., it might just be worth it because you're in it and you make her, you make her look what, what, better. What, what do you do with Jennifer Lopez in it? <laughs> she, she wasn't actually. I was kidding. I know. I'm joking, but, you know, make something up. <laughs> yeah, there you go, B.A. I, no, I, so, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything that quickly. So are you, are you going to plan on making a new record, you know, in the future? Or yeah, you got any no, ideas? I'm writing some new songs. And, nice. Uh, the new record will, yeah, I am going to, inevitably there will be another one. It's like, it's like the tides. Nice. CBC better take this this record. Yeah, I'm going to take it right one. to their doorstep. going to get on there. Are you, are you going to do a song about J-Lo? Yeah, you know what? You shouldn't. I'll start writing it tonight. And you know what? I'm going to wait for that. Be... The, boy, the Boy Next Door. Oh, the boy next door featuring BA. You know, we're we're gonna play that on the radio as soon as that comes out, man. <laughs> yeah. On. yeah, yeah. You better get on CBC this time, or I'm gonna take it right to their door and force them to do it, man. They need to put you on that radio, you know. Sounds good. They need to put you on that radio. Like I said, I've been a fan of you for a long time. Dollars, you know, it should be on there. The what now? It's our tax dollars. They should. They have. Should have no choice. There you go. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah, have you have you met any famous people? No. I saw Steve Anthony on the street once, and I saw the guy from Degrassi who got AIDS on the street. And my brother kind of made fun of him, and he got really mad. He chased, oh. he chased my brother a bit. <laughs> he chased your brother? Yeah, he was like doing like, Joey, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. And then the guy got really angry and chased him into a bar. Wow. You know, lots of people want to know too, uh, B.A. Uh, what's the, the B.A. stand for in your name? Brian Adams. Brian Adams. Brian Adams Johnson. That is it. Are hey. you a fan of Brian Adams? I like that one song he's got uh, with what, the sunglasses or whatever. I think I know which one you're talking Run, about. Run to you? Yeah, Run to oh, you. I love that one. It's my favorite. I've seen. I've That's met it. Brian Adams before. I've seen him a couple times, quite like a few times. 40 Spice is pretty good, too. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, damn. I can't remember the name of it there. No, me neither. Yeah. I, I, been forever since I've heard that, but I've actually met him a couple times. I met him in 2012 in Moncton there, uh, you know, before I left, and um, oh, he's a very down to earth person. But that's awesome, you know. I grew up, I grew up with Brian Adams. Well, I grew up with a mother who liked Brian Adams. On my side, it was Motley Crue. So you can just imagine what my household sounded like—a glam metal father, a glam metal son, and a Brian Adams mom. Hey man, that's something for everybody. Yeah, and then there's my grandmother as a cowgirl born in the 40s. Yeah, so there was a there was a different mixture of music in the household there yeah, when when I was a, a kid, and um, well, of course I chose the latter glam metal, and I have six tattooed on my hand. There you go. Yes. So ba, that's all we have for tonight, man. It's an honor to speak to you, and we'd love to speak to you again. You know, I thank Thanks you so lot. much for Thanks. being on here. No, no, no problem. Thanks a lot, Fredericton. Oh you. yeah, you betcha, Fredericton. That was this is ba Johnston, man, Canadian legend. Listen to the show, hook him up, you know, listen to his tunes. They're all over uh, MySpace, Last FM. You know, he's got the website there. Shit sucks is here, ding-dongs.